Hello and welcome back to part 33 of my YouTube video series that chronicled my journey through my Western Governor University Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree. Today's video is the first of two videos that I will share my top 10 study tips. So the first tip I can give you is kind of a psychological tip, not really like a physical actually do something kind of tip. And that is simple. Never lose sight of why you're studying. Why are you taking this degree? You know, why are you putting yourself through this extra stress and money and all the rest of it? And that is really, really important. Now, trust me, there are going to be times when you're working for your degree that you're simply going to get distracted or possibly just um, step away from the degree for a period of time. And that happened to me. Now, that could be a whole bunch of reasons for that. You know, maybe you got sick. Uh, maybe a family member got sick. Maybe there was some kind of family emergency you know, and you, you, you got pulled away. Or maybe work suddenly got really difficult and you didn't have quite the same amount of time. I mean, it's, life happens and there are going to be moments when maybe you kind of step away and it's difficult to get back into the study process. So what I recommend here is when you start your degree, write down on a piece of paper. Why are you doing this? Why are you putting yourself through this extra kind of stress, if you like, you know, the money, the expense or whatever? What's your reasons for doing this? Now, everybody has different reasons. Now, the big ones, of course, change of career, um, an opportunity to make more money, to change their family's you know, kind of future, you know, um, to be the first kid to graduate college in your family. You know, there's all sorts of different reasons. You know, for me, the big ones were simple. I, I wanted to be a role model for my kids, you know, that were going through like a college process at the same time. So I thought if I did it, I could kind of do it alongside them. Um, to round out my resume was another big one. If you go back to video one or part one of this series, you'll see that. And it kind of clearly outlines my reasons. Now, in those dark days, and there probably will be a few when, you know, I kind of lost a little bit of faith and I wonder why I was doing this. I was tired or whatever it might be and I didn't want to study. I'd go back and look, watch video one and it kind of just reminded me. You know, I was fresh faced. I didn't know what to expect, but it really did help me push through. So big tip, write it down, frame it, put it on the wall, put it in your work area. See, whenever you're getting down, you can look up, glance up, look at it and remind yourself. Maybe it's just simply a picture of your family, your kids, whatever it might be. But trust me, you're going to need that little bit of added motivation just to remind yourself, you know, why are you doing this? And trust me, it will give you the, uh, the extra oomph to get through and push through. So the next tip I can give you is have the right tools for the job. So what I mean by that is prepare well and have everything there so you have whatever you need to complete the class that you're working on. So for me, the big thing it starts with is having a decent computer. You know, if you have an older computer that freezes and doesn't load very quickly or, you know, it's a real pain in the backside, you know, if you're locking on you halfway through, you know, you study or, you know, that can get really frustrating. Now, I understand there's an expense to that. But you know what? In today's world, you can get pretty cheap uh, computers now that are half decent, you know, on Prime Day or wherever it might be. Sometimes states have a uh, back to school kind of tax free day. That's also a really good time to buy a computer, but have a decent one. The other thing I would suggest is if you can have uh, extra monitors. So in my setup on my desk, I have two or three monitors plus my laptop screen. And that really helps because I'm able to spread all my information across multiple areas. That way I could just look from side to side. You know, maybe I've got notes on one thing. I've got like a WG open up on another. I've got like a whatever it is on the other screen, a YouTube video. And it just helps me if everything's in front. It keeps everything organized. So I would recommend if you can have more than one screen, another monitor, is, I guess is what I'm saying. The other thing you need is 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 the right actual you know uh, equipment. So, for example, a calculator, a scientific calculator, will come in really handy. Now, you don't necessarily need a scientific one, but it will make your life much easier. They're not cheap, but if you can borrow one or whatever it is for the different math classes, I would really recommend that. Now, a regular calculator will do the job, but a scientific one, if you can afford it, would be great. Other things like uh, like paper, stock cards. I know it sounds kind of ridiculous. But you know what, the amount of times I, I'd, I'd write things down and make notes and you know stick them to my desk or whatever it is, these kind of things are huge. They help you for flashcards, they help you for learning. I know this kind of all sounds kind of straightforward, but you know what, be prepared. Have obviously your dry erase board ready for all your different exams. This is really important. A little tip here as well is have more than one dry erase pen. I know that sounds crazy, but in one of the exams I was taking, basically the pen ran out didn't work anymore so I was basically shot down at that point so after that I always carried a spare just in case 
The other thing I'd also really strongly re uh, recommend is uh, have a, a cloth so you can wipe it off as you go. As long as you show that cloth to the proctors uh, before the exam, they're, they're fine about it. But obviously it helps you clean that board off and having to use your finger or your shirt sleeve or whatever. It's probably not very nice, especially during the exam. And obviously you can never have enough pens and notepads just for taking notes, sticky pads, that kind of stuff. I guess my point is for this one is be prepared, have the tools to do the job and you have a much better chance of having success. So tip three is a bit of a two for one and that is set realistic goals and then track your progress. So a big tip I can give you here is uh, as part of your um, uh, sign up for Western Gov University, they do actually provide you with a free copy of Office 0365. And as part of that suite, you get Excel with it. So Excel is a spreadsheet software, of course. And what I'd highly recommend you to do is when you start, is basically open up a spreadsheet, kind of cut and paste all the classes in your degree program into this spreadsheet, and then start setting some goals for yourself, like dates. You know, when, I, when do I look to start this and how long do I think it's going to take? So in this situation, maybe you have some experience in that particular class and you can do that one a bit quicker. So maybe you put one week or two weeks and maybe it's a class you have no idea about and you're not sure Then you might want to be a bit more realistic. And that's where that realistic goal comes in. Maybe you give yourself a month. What I'm saying here is if you track your goals and you put all your information in there and you take notes as you go along, it's really a good tool to look back at. You can pull that spreadsheet up whenever you're kind of, you know, wondering where you are in your program. You can see it. It kind of lists all the ones you've got left, what you've completed. Are you keeping up to date with what you originally planned? Obviously, you can adjust it as you go, but it's just a really good way to track your progress. Now, some of the viewers of this particular channel actually shared me a couple of their kind of spreadsheets and they were really cool. And I kind of, I hate to say I kind of stole it and reinvented it for myself, but I would, it was, it was huge for helping me stay on track. So I would really recommend that. That way you have that kind of mentality where you can just keep going, see where you are. Now remember, Western Gov University is a little unique. It's a competency based learning environment, which means you're not going to get pushed like you would in a regular brick and mortar school. You know, if you're in a classroom and your professor sees that you're behind, you're going to get a tap on the shoulder or a nudge an email or whatever it might be and saying, hey, you're behind, you need to catch up. And that you just don't have that really with this particular learning environment. And you do have a student mentor and those good student mentors will kind of watch your progress and try to encourage you and keep you on track. But having this yourself, having your own goals and tracking it yourself will just really help you. And I think for those people that, you know, sometimes get a little bit distracted, this is an excellent way to try to, to stay the course. So tip four is make a time to study. So again, sounds really straightforward, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. And let me explain a little bit more. You have to have a kind of consistent kind of timetable schedule for your study. You have to make the time because like I said in tip one, life will happen. There'll be So for me, let me just tell you what I did and hopefully that might help give you a better picture. So I do have a day job and I do have a family. Uh, so what I would do is on those weeks that I was scheduled, uh, studying basically, uh, but I start work about 8 a.m. And so what I would try and do is I try and get in front of my computer by about 7 15, 7 30. So I take that first 30 minutes or so of the day before I really started work just to kind of review anything I'd done the night before. The next thing is if I had a time during my lunch break, I would try and take a look at my material as well, my study material. Now, with my particular job, that would change from week to week. It just depends how busy I was. And, you know, if you're in a corporate world, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes people schedule meetings over lunch breaks and that's kind of frustrating, but it, it happens. And now, after work was a little different because... Um, I would coach sports. I'm a soccer coach in my little town. And uh, so I would go out to the field and coach the kids, etc. Also, my family had different events going on. So sometimes there was something going on in the evening. So that was difficult dinner, etc. you know, walking the dog, whatever it might be. But what I would try and do is every weekday, I would try and come back to my computer later in the evening, say, say nine, nine thirty at night, and then just spend about an hour or two just kind of again doing some study. Now, this is where you have to be disciplined. Now, please don't take this the wrong way because this might come across slightly rude. But, you know, you have to make difficult choices. Are you going to watch Dancing with the Stars or NCIS or whatever it might be or Survivor you know, for an hour? Or are you actually going to study? You know, and that's the key here. You have to choose study if you want to be successful. 
Now weekends were huge, and this is what we I did. Now uh, my family we're huge fantasy football um, players, and we love NFL football. Now we're big Tennessee Titans fans. So Sunday was football day for us. Now I didn't want to study on a Sunday, so that was kind of my day of rest, my day of fun day, if you like. And I would recommend that you definitely have one of those because you do need a break as well. So Sunday, I would really try not to study unless I really was behind or something like that. For, for, for the most part, that's what we did. So to make that work was Saturday was a big study day for me. So I've said this in some of my other videos, but let me just reiterate that again. What I will try and do is I try and get up early on Saturday morning. If there was anything I needed to do, like some little chores, go to the grocery store, get gas for the car, whatever it might be, I try and knock that out early on Saturday. I'd have some breakfast, which is important. Make a pot of coffee, or, you know, whatever your uh, drink of choice is for ca to caffeinate yourself. And then basically I'd go to my office, I'd close the doors, and I would try and stay there for as long as it took for that particular day. Now, every Saturday was different. Sometimes it just depends on what class I was working on or where I was in the, you know, in the program. You know, sometimes I was there in there two or three hours and other times I was there all day. It just depends on the situation. Now, Saturday for me was also the day that I tended to do my objective exams, which is often, you know, the proctored exams, online exams. Now, I'd often do them in the evening. So I'd study what I needed to do on the Saturday, prepping myself for the exam. And then often I would take the exam, uh, early hours of Saturday, kind of Sunday. So it's one, two o'clock Sunday morning. And that's just because my house would be really quiet at that point. And, you know, it, I just felt like if I studied all day, gave myself a little break and then took the exam, that was the best way for success for me. And, and it worked. I, I, took, I can't tell you how many exams that way, at least 75% of what I did in this degree program. So that's a big one for me. Now, everybody learns different, but I'm my long-term memory isn't great. And if I'm not constantly using that information, the chances are I'm going to forget. But this was the best way because I've studied it. It was fresh in my mind, in my short-term memory. And then I was able to just go ahead and take the exam. So make the time is a huge one. You know, it's so important. There is nobody tapping on your shoulder. You know, you're behind, you know, like in a brick and mortar school, you know, you're going to get that professor tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, look, you know, you're behind, you got to catch up or whatever it is. You don't have that here. Remember, Western Gov University is a competency based online and learning environment. The only person that might push you is possibly your student mentor, but for the most part, it's on you. So, tip five is find yourself a quiet study place. So what I mean by that is somewhere where you can go and actually shut away the world. So you know what I'm talking about. You know, you're trying to study and the kids are fine in the background and there's TV on and, you know, you, there's a sports game that you might be remotely interested in and you're trying to hear for the score or, you know, whatever it is in loud street outside and they're doing road works and you can't fully focus. You know, that doesn't help you study. So what you've got to try and do is find a space in your house or wherever you study where you can have a dedicated me space. I mean, if you think about it, when you go to a brick and mortar school, that's exactly what you're doing. You're actually specifically going to a location that is set up to have the best possible, you know, success for study. You know, you go to a classroom, you go to an auditorium for a lecture. You know, if you're a music major, maybe you go to a music room, whatever it might be. And that's kind of what you need in this scenario. Find somewhere that you can close the doors, ideally, because you can shut the world away and have, you know, just the peace and quiet to get the study done. Now, not everybody has that ability. I understand that depends on your your situation. So headphones might do the trick, you know, put headphones in. Now, some people can listen to music with lyrics and still study. That's not me. So in that situation, what I did was I would uh, put headphones in and listen to like just, you know, uh, classical music or music with um, you know just instrumental music so that way uh, it wasn't fully distracting me by the lyrics I've just had the music on in the background that might help you at least that way you can shut up the real world but like I said big thing just find a space where you can just focus on the work and you have the best chance of success so that was the first five of my top 10 tips for studying at Western Gov's University I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, could you please go ahead and click on the like button and also maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, the video and the, the kind of the channel itself is growing and it's really fun to see that, you know, uh, the numbers are going up. I think we're close to 500 subscribers, which is just awesome. I would never have imagined that when we first started this out, what, 32 videos ago now. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, part two of this particular uh, series will be out very soon. I hope your study is going well. Uh, stay safe out there. 
Take care and I'll speak to you all very soon.